Welcome to Electron Line. We get a lot of viewers writing in that they like our method of solving Newton's second law type of problems, A V equals MA, by using the whole system and looking at all the forces acting on the whole system. But then they say, but our teacher, our professor, wants us to do it using free body diagrams. So what we decided to do here is compare the two methods and show you how to solve some of these problems so simply using the free body diagram method. There's one caution I will point out to you in just a moment that you not want to be sure of that you take care of, but other than that, you'll see that both methods will always give you the same answer if, of course, we don't make any mistakes. So here we have a simple example where we have two masses, one sitting on a table and the other one hanging from a pulley right here or a rope that goes over a pulley and the two masses are connected. And so the method that we typically use is we look at this as a whole system and we only consider the forces, external forces, acting on the system. We do not consider internal forces and the tension on the string connected to the two masses is really an internal force, so we ignore that. So what we do is we draw all the forces. We have the M2G acting on this mass right here. We have an M1G acting on this mass because of gravity. Then here, because it's on the tabletop, we have the normal force pushing back. That's Newton's third law. Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And then we have a friction force, which by definition is the normal force times mu. And the normal force is M1G, so this will be M1G mu. And then we realize that the only two forces causing the the system to accelerate would be this force right here, which actually aids the acceleration, and this force right here, which opposes the acceleration. We're going to assume that the acceleration is going to be in this direction, and if we end up with a positive answer, then our assumption was correct. We start with Newton's second law that says that the net force acting on a system equals the total mass of the system times its acceleration. The net force is always defined as all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. M2G is aiding acceleration because it's in the same direction as acceleration. M1G mu is opposing the acceleration because it points in the opposite direction of the acceleration. Now here's the trick. Notice that this block is accelerating to the right and this block is accelerating downward. That doesn't mean that this is a negative acceleration. We just simply say that the direction of acceleration is positive, and so over here to the right is positive, over here down is positive. So positive is in the same direction as acceleration, negative is in the opposite direction of the acceleration. So then we see that the total mass is simply the sum of the two masses, and this would then be the acceleration we're looking for. Solving this for A, we then take the left side divided by M1 plus M2, and then we can factor out a g, so the acceleration is simply m2 minus m1 mu times g divided by the sum of the two masses. If we use free body diagrams, what we need to do then is look at each object separately, in a separate window, so to speak. So a free body diagram is just a picture of a single portion of the whole system. We look at all the forces acting on m1, again we have the gravity acting down, the normal force pushing back, the friction force pushing to the left. Again, we're assuming acceleration will be to the right, and so M1G mu, the friction force, is in the opposite direction, that would be a negative force. And on the right side, we have the tension of the string pulling it to the right. Again, we use the equation F equals MA, or specifically, the net force equals MA, and the net force is always all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. In this case, the tension in the string is aiding the acceleration of M1 minus the friction force, and that equals the mass of M1 times its acceleration. Then we go to the second free body diagram. We look at simply M2. We see two forces, one due to gravity pulling down, and the other one, the tension in the string pulling up. So here we can see that the tension relative to M1 pulls to the right, the tension over here relative to M2 pulls upwards. So you can see that here this tension aids acceleration and this tension opposes the acceleration relative to M2 and of course this is relative to M1. So it's always what it's relative to. Again, we, we use the equation F net equals mass times acceleration. The net force is all the forces aiding the acceleration, the same direction as you assume the acceleration. And I guess I should put an A there and minus all the forces 
opposing the acceleration, so the net force equals the mass m2 times its acceleration. Now what we recognize, we now have two equations with two unknowns. The unknown t, the tension in the string, and the unknown a for the acceleration, which is what we're looking for. And what you need to do now is solve these two equations simultaneously, realizing that this must be the same tension, and therefore when we eliminate t, we solve for a, and we will get the same result as we did before. Both methods work, they're both good methods. What's confusing perhaps about the second method is that sometimes we don't realize what we should call positive and what we should call negative as far as acceleration or as far as the force is concerned. And the best way to deal with that is if it's in the same direction as the assumed acceleration is positive, if it's in the opposite direction to the assumed acceleration, it is negative. That's the best way to deal with it. So now in the next several videos, we'll show you some good examples of how to apply the method on the right here using free body diagrams to solve the very same types of problems as we have before when we think of it as the whole system and only considering forces acting on the whole system. Either way is good, either way will give you the correct answer and then you can choose which method you like best. That's how it's done.